I did the math. In three years, my daughter is now four, my son is two. My daughter has had a father for 10 years of her life. She's four. Why? Because I did the math. The amount of time that I would have spent with her working a nine to five, if you take that time and you take the actual time that I was actually spending at home with her, I gained an additional seven years of her life, six to seven years of her life, just in time proximity. So think about it. Just do some math. One stat is that the average father, the average father spends a meaningful max. 45 meaningful minutes with their children. Thanks all for tuning in to Dreamcatchers where we make things happen. Dreamcatchers was formally launched to unlock the hidden potential in successful, self-motivated individuals who desire to take their life's work to the next level but need support to evolve. We are a collective group of professionals with various backgrounds that use our talents to assist those individuals in realizing their wildest dreams by providing education, inspiration, and direction. This podcast is where we share the lessons we've learned along the way to catching our dreams and give you some context around the how and the why to each approach to put you further ahead on the journey to catching your dream. Are you ready? Welcome to the Dreamcatcher Podcast. I'm your host, Jerome, and I've got the Dr. Al Akir Rogers with me today. How are you, my brother? Brother, each and every single day, my stir doesn't change. I'm blessed by the best. I'm growing and I'm not shrinking because if I'm shrinking, I can't do anybody any good. So we're working it out today. <laughs> <laughs> Man, we reconnected through LinkedIn probably three months ago. He was doing a talk. I said, "Man, I gotta get you on the Dream Catchers podcast." So here we sit today. Yeah. So reaching out. What's the latest, man? I, last time, I, it might really be the last time I saw you in person was on the campus of North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University. I think, right? I see all kinds of things on the wall behind you. You done went and did some things. What's going on? Talk to me. Well, these, what you see on the wall, I mean, the reality is it is real. Okay, if you was to just put it online and go type in a name, it, it's real. But those are door openers. Because, you know, your gift only takes you so far. What you do to cultivate it, what you do to develop it, is how the opportunities begin to present themselves. So I, I, I did my part. It's taken me all over the world, 20 countries later. And, and there's a whole lot more to be done. Wow. So how do you, how, I don't even know where to go. I do know where to go. I do know where to go. So before you went on this journey of catching your dream, what was life like? Oh, life was a regular nine to five, man. You know what it is. Uh, you, you go to school, you get a good job, you, you uh, matriculate through university, you, you look for the big payday, and you get comfortable. You get real comfortable. And it's easy. Listen, nothing against anyone who's comfortable. But, but because of the journey that I've had to be on, I've had to learn to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Because I'm called to do a different thing. I have a greater purpose in my life. I'm clear on it. And as a result of it, things had to change. And so um, I, and I was working in corporate America for the years in which I, I, after I finished my doctorate in electrical engineering. And after that window, you know, I always said to myself, I, I enjoy people. I enjoy, uh, I enjoy people. I enjoy removing impediments. And I enjoy adding value. And in those things, those like a, it's like a great nucleus to build successful things. And so I always wanted to start my own business. And I always said I was going to start my own business. And I always said I was going to start my own business. But I never started my own business. Yeah. And then one day I got laid off. Mm. Ooh. Oh, come on now. Yeah, you got I got laid off. With all those degrees? Yeah, 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 yeah. All, three. all that experience? Yeah, 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 yeah. I got laid off. All that training? Yeah, yeah, but but here's the here's the best part behind it. Over the there was a a ninety day window period where the company that was buying out the old company was going to do some assessments and and going to shadow and and just sit in on the company, and then after those ninety days, it was supposed to be an opportunity where transition. Man, transition happened like clockwork. Ninety days hit it. They had the big general meeting and. Everyone's getting going up to the meeting. I'm getting ready to go up to the meeting. I came out the bathroom. <laughs> I came out the bathroom, and next thing you know, I'm getting escorted to a different meeting <laughs> where I was told I was being let go. And 
the past 90 days, something had been dealing with me on the inside because reality started to set in. Reality started to set in in that this can go any way. Are you prepared for either way? And so I began to prepare myself. I literally had a Fitbit on when I was being walked out. And at the brief moment when I went in, my heart rate spiked through the roof. Less than five seconds later, it was all the way down back to normal. It was just an immediate reaction to this really happened. But that, that, that normalcy told me, but you've been prepared for this the whole time. Because God had been preparing you for this the whole time because there's a greater call and a greater purpose for my life. And that was when I began to catch my dream. Really, really, yeah. really. <laughs> so who showed up to help you along the way? It's not who showed up. It's who was already there. You know, sometimes you can't see the trees in the forest. Talk to me. I, my life has been all about mentors. I can, I, can, I, can, I, I can go all the way back to fifth grade and tell you where the first mentor started. It started with my first male teacher. He was a Jewish rabbi named Malcolm Bialik who didn't take my stuff. I didn't even know all that about him then, you know what I'm saying? But he was my first male teacher, and he, he did not let me push him over. So when my story's told, I'm talk, I, I'm, I always mention my fifth grade teacher who was that first academic influence that was going to make me, that wasn't, now, uh, wasn't going to allow me to settle for second best. So much so that I got a bad letter on the first day of school in fourth grade, and they created an award just for me in the fifth grade because of a mentor. When you go on forward and fast forward, you got the high school, you have my AP calculus teacher. Here it is, the, you know, I was raised in Queens, New York, in the street, you know, I'm only going to all those details. But next thing you know, I have a, I'm an AP calculus. I don't fit the mold of being an AP calculus, but I'm an AP calculus, and I have this math teacher who won't quit on me to the degree where one time I was in the classroom, I had never seen this before. He threw a dry erase marker and a regular, and an eraser at my head. <laughs> he said, you need to shut up, stop talking. And then after class, he pulled me aside, he said, listen, I will not settle for second best from you because I know what you're capable of, mentors. You go through college, uh, Dr. John Kelly over in the Department of Electrical Engineering, there were so many more along the way. You get to the PhD, more mentors. So after I've matriculated through all of this, yeah, I have a pretty big, again, the, the Rogers connection. What do we do? We connect people and value on purpose. I've been connected purposefully all my life. And all I had to do was go realize it. Wow. And then okay. it was mentors. You keep on with the questions because there's a story for each one and how it segments my present mentor today. This is, this is how significant a mentor is. My present mentor, he's old enough to be a father. He calls me a friend. I, I humble myself and let him be a mentor role. He wanted to go into business with me. He said, young man, he said, you have no idea the gifts that inside of you. I'm going to help you get it out. I mean, we don't know what we don't know, right? Right. Somebody's got to tell us it's in there. Exactly. So you got to help. You got to have other people who've already tried, been tried, tried, tested, and proven that have gone through the ringer, gone through the fire, come on out, totally burnt up now can help you go through and come out refined. Wow. So tell me more about your mentor. How'd you meet him and uh, how'd you guys form your business? So while this whole layoff thing was going on, I was charged by my attorney, you know, I don't know, blue, don't know where this came from. She asked me to run her political campaign. I was her campaign manager. She was running for Hillsborough County Court Judge, Group A, a countywide election. I, I'd never done anything like that. Fundraising, uh, volunteers, event, da 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 da. Yard signs, banners, mailers. There was a lot to go. Managing five different event sites at one time. I said, I'm not scared. There's nothing I can't accomplish. Christ gives me strength. So I said, let's do it. I said, after she told me that, I said, let me pray on it. I'll get back with you. I said, let's do this thing. Okay? We didn't win. We didn't win. But boy, oh boy, we had fun. <laughs> but there was a greater purpose behind it. That's where I met my mentor on the campaign trail. We was going to him trying to secure some, some political funds. Next thing you know, I ended up being one of his clients, and then we ended up getting in business together. Wow. Next thing you know, um, we, we rendezvoused in Atlanta with another brother from, from, uh, from Dallas and another guy from L.A., different attorneys in, in different industries, and we sat down and put together a master plan. It's, it's, when opportunity 
come together. There, there, there isn't anything that will be withheld from anyone who would uprightly, diligently seek after the Lord's face. That's what we're doing in business. So we're not doing this for ourselves. This isn't an alakia, want to get rich type moment. Nah, there's a lot of people involved in this. There's enough to go around. Come on. <laughs> enough to go around. This so, means added value to my life, for real. Yeah, there's no question. So, but there had to be a point where you're like, I should just go get a job. Like, it would be so uh, much easier to go get another job, right? Because uh, yeah. your income changed dramatically. So, oh, what, 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 mm -hmm. what happened that made you want to keep going? Well, see here, a word. You know, I got a word back when I was at a &T. You take care of my business, you take, I take care of yours. I was in prayer. And the Lord spoke from my heart, clear as day. You take care of mine, I'm take care of yours. You won't ever have to worry about anything. You just need to trust me. I'm, I'm riding on to that. Here we are almost 20 years later, riding that thing. And, and so, yeah, it would have been easy to go take a job. So let's just click quick disclaimer. I'm a minister of the gospel at heart first. I'm a husband first. All of everything else in that line falls in the line. You feel me? And because of all of those things about me, I have different... I operate to a different beat of a different drum. And and operating to that different beat of that different drum, you know, Ishe Oluwa Kole Bajayo, you know, one of the things that I recognize about your uh your thinker symbol on on dream catchers is uh yeah, I saw when I saw that was exactly what I said, yeah, well in the same call for uh I forget the name of it, um uh, cooperation. But it's definitely about cooperation. You understand what I'm saying? Sorry, I digress, my bad. What I recognize during that moment was i can't go anywhere the campaign showed me what was in this county it showed me and gave me greater greater clarity as why i'm in this city the, this the, the things that i saw along this campaign i didn't like and so if there's going to be some change somebody's got to step up and be it wow so i'm positioned and i ain't going anywhere yes so tell oh. me some more about oh go ahead Three years later, no bills were late, nothing's overdue, and I still have excellent credit. Come on now. <laughs> really? Three years. Oh, and I was given clear, you remember I told you I operate to a different beat, to a different drum. I was given specific instructions. Don't ask anyone for any help financially because you don't learn to trust me. So, there, there's, there, you, there is no quit. There is no stop. There is no... You just keep going. You know, I I walk every day, right? And one of the questions I ask myself every morning is, is my sacrifice enough in order for me to get the reward on the other side? Or is there something else that I should be doing in order for my gifts to make room for me? And it's very interesting that you say, you know, after three years of this transition where I think you either jump out of the plane or you, you get pushed out of the plane, right? One of the two happened, but eventually you get out of the plane. And so this transition happened. I don't, you, you kind of mentioned that you knew that something was happening, but you didn't say that you had set out on a plan in order to get out. I didn't. So the fact that you were living your life in a way that you had the ability to take the cut, right? And then get income, but still be able to cover the way that you're living it means that you weren't living over your, your means, right? Oh, that, number one. That's just called literacy. Ooh, that's literacy. Go there. Go, go, go all the way down that hole. All the way down that red hole? All no. right. Um, I've been married for seven years. We're in one of, we both have excellent credit scores. We're on one accord when it comes to not living above your means. All cars are paid off, okay? Uh, just putting that out there. I'm, I'm not trying to keep up with the Joneses. My last name ain't Jones. <laughs> uh, go all the way there. What, is you, what can you withstand if six, in six months if your income was hit? Do you, does an individual have at least six months? We had at minimum six months. Now, you know, with the PA, with all of this on the wall and the patents, da 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 da, da I'd have been like, yeah, it'd have been real easy. You know, not at all. Not at all. There was something I was going through, personally and spiritually, that it was my journey. It's my story. And, and I came out. I came out as a much greater person for it, trustfully. 
as, as a person who can trust a whole lot more, not looking at circumstances, not relying on other people, other people's jobs, not relying on those things. And, and so if anything were to happen again, I, I've been here already. Why am I concerned? Mm. But when an individual, what's really inside of you is going to come out when it's tried. Mm. It's going, you either will get burned or you'll get refined. Which one is it? Are the impurities going to come out and then molt right off? Or is it going to take a real, real aggressive scrape to get all of that hard stuff off and shine up? That's the difference between what refinement looks like and, and just burn. Wow. But, but that rabbit hole of, 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 of financial literacy is heavy. It's heavy and it's deep and, and our people perish for a lack of knowledge. But that's not an excuse. Well, but there isn't a lack of knowledge, right? I mean, you can Google whatever you want to Google right now. Like, yeah, you can. There's people yeah. who are willing to help you figure it out. You can, if you want to invest in yourself, you can pay for a coach to walk you out of that situation that you got yourself in and you realize it's not working for you, but you choose to stay there because it's comfortable. Oh, say that word again comfort yeah comfort. it feels good doesn't it feel good to me she gets you a pillow you standing up sleeping look at that standing up leaning that's that's comfort yeah yeah comfort. Uh, that that's that that's a thing there so i mean you've been on this journey you, you got two or three challenges that you face along the way and oh, yeah. can you tell me how you overcame them oh yeah one i my task and assignment is to educate. If one of the, you know, one of the biggest challenges about me with business is I don't want to sell you anything. I, I don't want to sell you something. I want to educate you because if you recognize what value is, you'll snatch that thing up in a heartbeat. Because if somebody's feeding you and you salivating at the chops and it's good to you, hello, you better go get some of that. But you think I'm just going to get a little bit Thanks. And then I'm going to go to, what's it called? Old Golden Corral. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know what's in that stuff. I'm just saying. <laughs> that's all it's got to be. Uh, forever, forever, value. Recognize, you know, when, you, when, you, when you're in the process of attracting different clients to take advantage of the service that you, add, that you have, what I've learned is that when you sell yourself short, people will think it's that. And it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's it's very, very psychological. And in short, what I'm saying is one of the challenges that I face is when individuals recognize that it's something they want to take advantage out of, why don't they pull a trigger? Is it, and, and see what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to be manipulative. I can't do that. I have a really difficult time telling you that, you know, this is going to be the best thing that you've ever done. You know, it might not be, but I promise you this, it's going to add value to your life. Okay? It, it, it doesn't compare to you having a child. That's not, that's might be the best thing in your life. This is nothing on comparison to that, but this will set your future up for the rest of your life for that job. But wow. again, perspective is just one thing on how individuals will see a matter and allow people to make their choices. And I keep on with a good smile and keep on to the beat. That's one challenge. Another challenge is when, when you connect people and value, Oftentimes, people are, think value is going to look a certain kind of a way. It's going to look, a, it's going to be black, it's going to be white, it's going to be Asian, it's going to be, listen, when you get connected with an individual, there's a process in which you go through to know whether or not y'all really want to do business. Just because you make a whole bunch of money doesn't mean I want to do business with you. Ooh-wee. Because you are super well entrenched and connected on a level of where I'm going doesn't mean I'm going to holler at you. You know, here's an example. On Thanksgiving Day, I met an individual three years ago when I was in Orlando. One of my, another mentor, okay? Another mentor said, oh, okay, you need, I need you to come with me. He took me to Orlando. I'm sitting with a guy who's almost a billionaire. I'm like, you know, I, 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 I'm not starstruck. I'm not a fan. Feel me? But I can respect the individual's hard work that I can right. And I'm sitting there talking with him, and he's asking me a bunch of questions. He's pretty intrigued by, by what I'm saying. I'm okay. And I reached out for him on a, on a, 
over the, over the course of the years and send messages and he responds back. And the next thing you know, I, I didn't hear from him anymore. Man, I got a message from him on Thanksgiving. For what? I mean, if person hasn't made any, I don't know about you, but if you're still in my phone, that means there's still a reason that you're there. Because I'll go through, I go through dele delectomies, delete them. De 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 yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I call it the purge. purge. Yeah, I purge regularly. If a person's still in there, there's a reason for it. Okay? And so I'm like, here he is. And, you know, he gave me one bit of advice when we connected way back then. He said, I need you to spend your time becoming a master of influence. Whoa. Yeah. I... Here's a guy who's selling out, who's selling out auditoriums, 100,000 plus, you feel me? And this is what he gave me. He said, be in your word and become a master influencer. Know what you know and know what you don't know. And that's what I did. And in doing that, there's still a reason why he's in my phone. And he reached out. So we're going to hit, I'm going to hit him up this week, see what's up. <laughs> That like, hey, so have you seen my stuff? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, those are the two challenges. One is is um, making sure individuals recognize the value, and the second one is being intentional about knowing who you should partner with. That's important because I don't want to get stumped. Hey guys, back in 2016, me and the team decided to formalize Dreamcatchers as an organization that can help people achieve their wildest dreams. If this is you. Please visit our website at dreamshouldbereal.com in order to find out the details of our services and how we can help you become a dream catcher. Talk to you soon. So I, I, I've come to a troubling realization over the past quarter, and it is that compensation and value are not tied to each other. What do you say in response to that? compensation and value. I'd like for you to unpack that a little bit more. Can you unpack that a little bit more? So you can be somebody presenting a tremendous value proposition, uh -huh. but because of the way it's delivered, say, and that's just one characteristic, because of the delivery, people decide that it's not worth what the offer is. Right. Okay, that's good. That shook me to my core because as somebody who wants to deliver value to the world a value creator is yeah. how i like to position myself uh to think that somebody wouldn't buy value regardless of the packaging mm -hmm. is disappointing right you know the majority of what i make my income from is real estate and so i go in and i find value and then i extract that value by making things look better than what they are or solving a problem for an individual. Um, but I'll go in and see something that's dirty and dingy and make it shine again and present it to somebody else. And that's value creation. But making an offer to improve somebody's life, it's, it's, it's really interesting, Doc. Mm -hmm. So yeah. people won't invest in themselves, right? They don't see themselves as somebody who something that's value or value can be imparted into them, right? So we only want those think things- the number one reason for that? Why do you think people, what's, the, what's your number one reason for that? That you think that is the case? I think they like their comfort, right? Because if I tell you that you got to do something different, that means there's something wrong with you. And who are you to tell me something's wrong with me, right? Uh, somebody who's had a different experience than you. See, I'm on the other side. Isn't it, right? I, me, I, 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 swallow, I put it in a nutshell, I call it pride. Ooh, ego. Pride, pride's strong, man. It, it, and you know, even saying that, man, you pride. Man, you can't tell me that. <laughs> My bad. It's, right, it, it's something I had to deal with. You know, these right here, these right here, this one, this one especially. Humbling. That thing can big your head up right there, the big one. Humbling this experience. Goes, that thing can big your head up. You know, you get all these initials. All these initials after your name, yeah, it could make you. It's Doctor Rogers. <laughs> I remember I was at the counter somewhere, and someone said, "Mister," it was Doctor. Get, get over yourself, man. <laughs> and then here you go. I go watch one of my mentors, who's department chair at a large university in the state of Florida, and someone called him Mister. He said, "Thank you." Just like that. Just like that. 
Mm -hmm. he, he don't he doesn't read his own press and i've learned to do that too because the moment you start uh reading your own press sitting there filling your head inflating your own your own mindset you, you're gonna have a problem you're gonna mm -hmm. think more of yourself than you ought to and that's hardiness that's pride that's gonna lead you to bust your face Oof. And i've done that enough <laughs> i've done it enough you learned the hard way huh yeah i did I, yeah hard enough <laughs> so what was your worst fear in going through the process and how did you break through it? That was during that, will I get laid off, will I not get laid off time? And oh, you know, here's the part about that. That company that bought the other one, they actually called me, called me back and they offered me a contract. No, no, no. They offered me my job back. They offered me back. Same salary and more hours. Now, you know, my daughter was just born and and so I was able to spend all that time with her. And during that time, that was what that whole three years was about. One, solidifying your marriage to an unbreakable space and place and being a father where you can be there. You're training your children. You're raising your children. You're not putting them in daycare. You are the spiritual influence and the head of your home. That's what I got to see over those three years. But when they offered me that job back, I said, no, thank you. Whoa. Things are gone. Wait, but Things your life would have been more comfortable. What are you doing? The worst thing that could already happen, happened. That was it. And again, I had been conditioned those 90 days before it happened to be ready for it. So the worst thing that happened, happened. Now what do you do? Well, I ain't begging. Y'all ask me, you want me to work more? <laughs> nah, I'd rather be home my baby girl because that's eternal. That's going to have a real lasting impact. I'm training that one up on a whole different level. Mama is awesome. This girl is four years old. She reading. Let's go. So you're telling me that time is more important than money. Absolutely. That's what they pay you for, your time. So how much do you value your time? See, that's how when you're setting your price with stuff in the service business, you, you better value yourself. <laughs> if you want to connect people and value on purpose, you better first value yourself. Don't sell yourself short. I learned that too. Man. So now I'm going to go deep, right? That's good get real personal with you. Was there a point when everything was on the line? Was there a rock bottom moment for you? Nope, because I had that word. Come I had on. that word that it was gonna work. And I'm walking by faith and not by sight. It didn't matter what it looked like. Yeah, it didn't look good, but I wasn't working in that. I wasn't working in that at all. Had a couple interviews. You had, I had a company fly me out to Albuquerque, New Mexico, interview me. I went out there just making sure that I still had the skills to be able to apply for a job because I never intended on taking it anyway. Just wanted to make sure that I still <laughs> had the skill set. You know, they chose someone else anyway. But I also learned a lesson in that too because I had a mentor that said, so how'd it go? I said, I killed it. Oh, you, you killed it. You did that all by yourself. You mean to tell me all these all these months that you've been sitting here trying to get interviews and opportunities, you've not been able to get them, then something opens up and you want to take credit for that? Ouch. Go ahead, bust your face again. Pride. So I swallowed that one too. So there was a grooming process for me to learn how to evacuate myself. I had to really cultivate my own fallow ground. And you know, fallow ground is a very unique thing. I'm actually studying this right now. Fallow ground is not just hard ground. It's ground that actually was very fertile and produced harvest. But then over time, it got hard and was full of thorns and bristles. Sounds like our mind. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When you're enslaved to your each and every single day without a plan, without a plan, we're going to perish. So if there's no plan, which I did not have when I said I was going to have my own business, there was no plan. I was just talking. It was just a bunch of words. It was a pipe dream. No wow. plan. It perishes. If I have my plan, actually I have it. It's, it's, it's so, I, I have my vision board. So if I was to give you my vision board, here's my plan for 2019, 2019 at the time. I stuck by that. I, I, I didn't accomplish everything. I'm almost there. I ain't finished it. But I laid out some things that I wanted to see happen. Man, the baby's here. That was all there. Hey! <laughs> there was an increase in, in financial revenue that we wanted to see generate. That was been put in place. There was a uh, making sure I share the gospel and lead people to Christ. That part was there. There was, I wanted to speak to every single NFL team. I didn't get to do that. I only did two. You know what I'm saying? Not teams, but particular individuals, individuals I mentor. You know, so as I'm working through these things, there was a plan. So now that that plan was in place, I can execute. Without a vision, 
there is nothing to go off of. What? What do you feel is the biggest reward for going through your journey? Hmm. I'll show you. I'll show you. You know, right now, I'm at home for a few weeks because my daughter, I'm sh- you know, things are shut down pretty good because my daughter was just born. Okay? And where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Right here. The biggest reward, let me turn it sideways. Turn the volume, let me turn the brightness all the way up. Bam. <laughs> Family time. That's my biggest reward right there. You can't get that back. The, what, what I've been, I did the math. In three years, my daughter is now four, my son is two. My daughter has had a father for 10 years of her life. She's four. Why? Because I did the math. The amount of time that I would have spent with her working a nine to five, if you take that time and you take the actual time that I was actually spending at home with her, I gained an additional seven years of her life, six to seven years of her life, just in time proximity. So think about it. Just do some math. Uh, One stat is that the average father, the average father spends a meaningful max 45 meaningful minutes with their children a day. There was a study in which they had put microphones on children one years and one years of age and under, and they put a microphone on them and they asked these fathers, how much interaction do you think you have with their children a day? They said about 15 minutes. The meaningful. average on the low end is seven, but when they when they check the microphone and the interaction, 15 seconds. Huh? In the morning, 15 seconds when they got home. Just, hey, baby, good to hold you, hold you, hold you. Here, mommy. 15 seconds? 15 seconds. Meaningful. Touch. Interaction. You feel me? Hey, you, you coming at the door. Mama got the baby. Here's the baby. You're hugging. You're holding. All right. Phone rings here. I got to take this call. 15 seconds. 37 seconds average per day. I get a minimum of three and a half hours, two and a half hours minimum every single day. Now that I'm back actively pursuing things on a different level. But before, 10 to 12 hours a day. Regular nine to five, you'll get 60 to 90 minutes. 60 to 90 minutes versus eight to 12 hours, I gained a lot of time with my children. Wow. That, that's, that was the greatest lesson learned, is that, and oh, that company that I turned them down, they, they brought me back on to be a contractor. <laughs> and then I laid my own hours, I laid my own rate, and over time, oh, Lord, bang, bang, bang. I'm, whoo. Baby. I did know, I did over time, one time, because my wife reminded me, she said, babe, it's not about the money. It's about being able to own your own time. Wow. So that was my reminder. It's about my time. So now that you've outgrown the old life, what's the biggest difference in your approach to life today? Listening a whole lot more. Listen a lot more. I don't have all the answers. As I, whether I think I do or not, there's no need to espouse it. I'm on a couple boards and I had a, several individuals reach out to me and say, you know, how come you don't say much? And, I just, I, and this is one-on-one. I said because I've always had something to say. I can, I can stand to listen a little bit more. That's it. I had one of my elders, one of my leaders. She had that said to me one time. She said, Dr. Rogers, do you always have to have something to say? Hmm. Here she is, PhD credential in her own right. She's been a counselor for decades. I think she's a little more wise than me. And I said, yes, ma'am. And I received it. I'm going to be quiet now. I'm I'm, I'm going to be quiet. I'm going to be quiet now. So what are you most grateful for in this new space? I'm grateful for God's faithfulness. I'm grateful for this beautiful family of mine. And I'm grateful for being free. You know, there's something about freedom. 
<laughs> Cut it out. Don't go too deep now. I won't go too deep. You know what? The deep calls to the deep and the shallow will call to the shallow. So let's just see who resonates, who this, who this resonates with. All right? The majority of people don't want to be free. They want to be taken care of. Stop. Don't you say anything else. Okay. I'm kidding. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> to be free means that you're going to have to work for that. To be taken care of means just that. You don't have to work for it. You're going to be taken care of. And in the process of realizing that I wanted to be free, I had to work for it. I had to endure certain things to go through that. I had to come out on the other side to recognize that anything worth working for is worth sacrificing and having. Different perspective. You know, this right here, that thing, that thing can mess you up because it can give you an entitlement mentality. It can, 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 can. And albeit, I'm grateful that I was able to accomplish it. There's a whole different story behind it all by itself. But at the same time, I had to grow up. And I had a little entitlement. Yeah, I'm doing that six figure. Get over yourself. You live in Tampa, Florida. And that field ain't even there, so better be grateful. At the wow. same time, I've learned to be all right working for something. Whether I'm creating it or helping others to create it, I'm a little more grateful today of being able, I have a different appreciation for what it means to work because that is synonymous with freedom. Wow. Work equals freedom. I mean, freedom ain't free. <laughs> <laughs> free to make free. So what dream are you most catch focused on catching next? <sighs> Continued multiple streams and and more time, multiple streams so it, it can equate to more time with family. And you know, my, my daughter's four years old, she's reading. You know what I mean? They she she's sounding them out, not just the sight words she memorized, she, she's reading. And my son, you know, he, when he gets to that age, daddy's gonna have to be around because he's me. <laughs> I know how to handle me. I know how to handle me. It takes a very special person to be able to handle the young version, untamed me. And I need to be in place to be able to do that. Mm. So I'm working towards that dream of being able to teach my son. Wow. Because he sees different. He's different. What gift are you giving the world? How to be connected effectively. Okay, because there's a couple things you have to do with connection. When you're connecting, you first the first thing you have to do is you have to you have to what's the first thing? You have to cultivate. You have to cultivate your ground. Well, well, first of, first off, let me let me scale that back. You have to be captivated. You have to captivate. To captivate means to take hold of something, to capture it, and to hold on to it. Because if someone has a dream, I need to help you take it captive first. Because if you don't, someone's going to steal it or you're just going to lose it. So if I can first help people take captive of their dreams, okay, that's not the end of it. Now we have to cultivate it. Let's begin to cultivate this dream. Let's begin to cultivate this dream that you just taken captive because when you cultivate, that means you're nurturing. You have to begin to develop it. Then you have to generate it. All right, now that you've cultivated, let it begin to work. Let it begin to produce. Let it begin to demonstrate something on a magnitude scale that you would have never imagined, but because you connected with people and value on purpose, you were able to realize it. Mm, mm, mm. Intentionality is the key. Yes. Yes. Man. All right, brother. So what's the one thing you want people to take away from our conversation today? The mission and vision of the Raj Connection connects people and value on purpose by transforming toxic and unhealthy cultures into thriving, productive ones by transforming attitudes, improving, uh, improving attitudes, igniting success and influencing transformation. Sometimes what you don't know, other people do know. Realize the value that's within inside of yourself so you can begin to seek out the people that can help you get it. If you have a dream, you're listening to the Dream Catchers podcast, so you might as well catch up with who has an opportunity to help your dream come alive. All right? 
Oh, if you want to learn a little bit more, visit therogersconnection.com <laughs> and shoot me a message. So other than the website, are there other ways for folks to get in contact with you? I'm on LinkedIn, Alakia Rogers. I'm on AL3, A-A-K-H-I-R is every handle that I have on any social media platform, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. And I'm not a hard person to find, especially when you want to get connected. Yeah. You, know, you know, one thing that's often said is that you're three connections away to knowing the most influential people in the world. And if you just look at your people, and who you know, you realize how true that is. Wow. I, I love know it, what I'm connected to, and those are secrets that you hold on retainer. <laughs> wow, man. I, I, I deeply appreciate you coming on the Dreamcatchers podcast and, and dropping these jewels for us. Um, I appreciate the opportunity, man. Thanks for reaching out, bro. Thank you. Yeah, you, you're that certainly says a lot a, right there. That says a lot right there that you're able to reach out and just cooperate. It's, that's what it's about at the end of the day, right? Value comes from cooperation. Yes. I don't know that many people make that connection, but cooperation is the fastest way to value creation because there's so much more that can be done through the power of people being connected and moving, right? And so that's why I enjoy the Rogers Connection. And, you know, I see, I see when you post the videos and I'm like, man, I need to go do something. <laughs> <laughs> then when I see yours, I'm like, shoot. <laughs> Dang, now it. I need to do some more. <laughs> yeah. So. You know, when you're talking about your high school friend yeah. and how he passed, you know, what did he leave? What are you leaving today? Those things stick with you. Yeah. Yeah. It'll cut you to your core if you're not careful. Yeah. Um, so, guys, if you made it to this part of the podcast, you must have enjoyed it. Do us a favor. Reach out, connect with our guests, and give us a rating, review, and share it with one of your friends, man. This has been a great episode. I hope you guys enjoy the new format of the podcast. Just trying to try some new things, share some uh, a different approach with you. So with that, we'll talk to you on the next episode. All right, now, appreciate the opportunity for being able to share, and God bless you all, man. Peace. Thank you for joining the tribe today. We would love to hear from you. Please don't forget to rate, like, and share. Perhaps someone you know could benefit from what we've discussed. Until the next time, remember that your dreams should be real.